and welcome to Saturday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic, where you'll see on the screen we're doing Fog of War again today. This is my favourite of all of the new Sudoku innovations. Um, and you can see, we just we just can see two, two cells in this grid. Uh, and the puzzle is called Foggy Whisper Loop. And I've, I've, re I've read the instructions before I turned on the webcam. They are intriguing indeed. Um, this puzzle has been recommended to us a few times actually um, as being a very interesting take on Fog of War and if you're new to Fog of War Sudoku and you're wondering what on earth is going on the idea is that we can use logic alone um, to place digits in the grid and if we place correct digits it will it will clear the fog and allow us to place more digits what you mustn't do is say go into that square and guess all of the possible answers because you will eventually or one of the digits one to nine will be correct and it will clear all the fog from those cells but it will be an unjustified reward you will not have earned um, what you get to see and the important thing about fog of war is we must earn our rewards um, anyway I will read you the rules of this foggy whisper loop by Itrio in a moment or two's time um, I've got a few things to mention today let me start with, uh, well, we've got a crossword. Um, we've got Mark Solve of the Times Club Monthly Special Cryptic Crossword. That's available on Patreon today. Um, we've got, what else have we got? Well, the other thing we've got going on on Patreon, of course, is our Planet Suite, which is the um, the monthly monthly reward for June. This is a Sudoku hunt. You've still got three more days to get in your solutions to be with, in with a chance of winning the prize. And today's planetary fact for us comes courtesy of Phil Schaffer. Now, Phil, Phil was the first one who sent in this fact. We have had others who've sent in the same fact. So it's clearly a good fact. And the fact is that Uranus was the first planet discovered by the telescope. Uh, in 1781. But Neptune was the first planet discovered by mathematics. And I love this. And this was in 1846. And apparently um, Neptune was discovered because um, scientists observed using telescopes the fact that Uranus was deviating slightly from the orbit they were expecting. Um, so they hypothesized that there could be another planet further out from Uranus with, a, with sufficient mass to exert just enough pull of grav or gravitational pull to pull Uranus onto its different trajectory. And they guessed that that might be happening. And then they were able to prove it by getting a more powerful telescope and training it in the right part of the sky and finding Neptune. So that, that's a really cool fact. Um, very, very nice indeed, Phil. So thanks for that one. Um, and in fact, I'm going to use this opportunity to mention another of our patrons who wrote very, very poignantly to us. Uh, this was this was Rebecca about her mother, Judith, who would have been, I think, 64 on the 10th of June. Um, and Rebecca, I should have read this out sooner, but it was only brought to my attention uh, yesterday. Uh, and Judith, uh, Rebecca's mother, had um, an amazing love. Of, of astronomy um, but unfortunately she died a couple of years ago of brain cancer and before indeed Rebecca had even discovered cracking the cryptic um, and Rebecca thinks that her mum would have would have enjoyed the channel and she she loved astronomy uh, to the point where uh, and had enough knowledge of astronomy to the point where she she did things like visited Rebecca's brownie pack and taught all of the brownies exactly what they needed to know to get their astronomy badge badges um, and Rebecca even describes how she brought Judith brought a um, a sort of scale model of all the planets on old dot matrix paper you know that the, the paper that used to fold up and I'm guessing what what Rebecca's telling us is that you know on one page there would have been Mercury and then you would have pulled a few pages out and then there would have been Venus and then there would have been Earth and um, apparently it took an awful lot of pages to get as far out as Pluto and back in those days Pluto was still considered a planet so I, I love hearing stories like that so Rebecca thank you for sharing that and I hope I know you all went out to lunch as a family to remember your mum um, and I hope you were able to celebrate her life fittingly. Um, and yeah, and, and thank you again 
um, for writing to us uh, as I say these sorts of things they, they yeah I, I like hearing them at least um, now other other news other shout outs let's do Jeremy who's turned 42 today and I know this because your partner Kaylin wrote to us um, and rather rather charmingly she wrote that she will love you till you're 102 um, and I'm not sure what happens then Jeremy <laughs> I'm not sure. You've got 60 years of Kaylin's love to go and then presumably it might be up for renewal. Um, but uh, yeah, in fact, in fact, this might become more of a thing in the future. I remember uh, back when I was um, working in, in, in the bank, I attended I attended some talk once given by a very senior actuary who insisted that the person who will live till a bit they're 150 years old has already been born, which struck me as being, well, that, well, that's potentially exciting. And for you, Jeremy, well, 102, when Kaylin's love's up for renewal, you need to be thinking about that, my friend. Anyway, um, I hope you have a brilliant birthday today. I hope you enjoy, enjoyed your CTC-themed present, which I do know about, and of course that you had lots and lots of chocolate cake. Um, other other birthdays, Michael, it's your birthday today, and I know this because your little sister Melissa wrote to us uh, and told us that you'd got her watching. Thank you for doing that, and Michael, I hope you have a brilliant day. And oh, I've got a late birthday to do as well. I'm sorry about this one, but Rin, uh, you turned, I don't know in fact what you turned, but I know it was your birthday on the 10th of June. Your husband Mako wrote to us and told us that you've been married for six years and you are very much the love of his life. And uh, he was intending to take you out to dinner at the restaurant where you first met. Um, so Rin, I hope that was a good meal and I hope you had a great birthday. Um, and that I think is, oh well, no, the other thing I can mention is on Patreon we, tomorrow, we've also got more, uh, another kid Sudoku hunt, four by four puzzles, very suitable for people new new to Sudoku. Anyway, if, if uh, that, that's there tomorrow. But now let's get on with Foggy Whisper Loop and I shall read you the rules of Itrio's puzzle. Um, so here, the, here we go, this is what we've got to do. Normal Sudoku rules apply. Digits in a cage must uh, not repeat and must sum to the number in the top left corner of the cage. So that cage, wherever it goes in the fog, has to add up to 13. That cage has to add up to 16. Um, but we, don't, we obviously can't see where these cages go. Digits separated by a white dot are consecutive. Not all dots are given. So somewhere in the fog, we've got dots. Um, I, I can't really do this. Oh, I can go, go small numbers. So imagine there was a dot separating these two cells. And we worked out that was a 1. Then that would have to be a 2 in order to be consecutive with 1. Um, assuming there was a white dot there. <laughs> Um, but this is the right. This is where it gets mad. Right. What we've got to do is draw a one cell wide loop of orthogonally connected cells. The loop may not touch itself, not even diagonally. So in building our loop, um, we could not do something like that. That's not allowed. Although it looks loop esque. It's not, it doesn't meet the rules of this puzzle because you can see this loop here touches itself at a point and that is not allowed. So we'd have to correct that. That, that, that could be a loop, I think. Um, the loop, right, the loop must enter every, every cell of every cage. Right, so we're immediately being told those two cells are in the loop. The lo and the loop acts as a German whispers line so i.e. adjacent digits on the loop must have a difference of at least five okay which is it's a beautiful idea for a rule so this loop we're going to end up with in the grid um let's let's build it let's say that was the loop um let me highlight that for a moment so what does this mean well it means let's say we worked out that square was a one now those two squares would have to be at least five different from one. So that could be six or seven, that could be eight, for example, um, etc. And we'd have to keep going along the loop, making sure that the next digit along was at least five different from the one from the one that preceded it, all the way round the loop. 
Um, okay, and then the only other rule is that the grid's covered in fog, which is patently obvious, and placing correct digits will clear the fog. That's it. So that's all the rules. Do have a go at the puzzle. The way to play is to click the link under the video as usual. But now I get to play. Let's get cracking. And I can see I can see straight away something here. I'm going to go to Oh my phone's buzzing, that's fine. Um I'm going to go to the the line drawing tool. Line drawing tool. What's a drawing tool? The line drawing tool, which which you can get by clicking uh, on the cog icon. Uh, next to your grids and enabling the pen tool. You can see I always have the pen tool enabled. I always have the letter tool. I have everything enabled. Um, but 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 this allows you to draw to draw loopy lines in the grid. And I know that this cell because it's a cage cell, it's in the loop and it's in row one, column one. So the loop must go like that. And we know that the loop doesn't go into this square because if it did. It would touch itself at a point, wouldn't it? These two cells are connected orthogonally, and that's not allowed. Um, so the loop is going to stay out of this square, which means it must go into that square, and it must go into this square. And what else do we know about this loop? I know, I know we know it acts as a German whispers line. I'm more thinking about the geometry of it. Draw a one cell wide loop. The loop may not touch itself. Oh yes, and it must enter every cell of every cell of every cage. Hmm. Yeah, so I feel like I feel that's a sort of country road constraint. I might be wrong about that. I'm prepared. To, I think I'm right though. I, th I, th I think that means that when we when the loop enters a cage, it will have to stay in the cage until the cage finishes before leaving the cage. Because if it was to leave the cage and then re-enter the cage again, I think we're going to breach the condition. My brain is telling me that we're that that will breach the condition about the loop not touching itself. Um, but uh, that might be wrong, and it's a bit hard to. It's a bit hard to prove whether it's right or wrong when you can't see any white cells in the grid. Right, so what do we know about the 16 cage? We know that cell's on the loop. Well, we know both of those cells are on the loop, actually, because I can see very clearly that the 16 cage continues into this row 9, column 8 cell. Now, right, so here we know something slightly different. We know the loop doesn't go in the corner, because if the loop goes in the corner... The loop will have to turn there, and then that will have to continue, obviously. And this loop has has c connected. Maybe it's easier to see that it's touching itself orthogonally. If we were to colour it in, you can see that it's a one cell wide loop. So here, the loop is touching itself, and that's not allowed. Um, so hang on, let me get rid of my loopage. So this square is, is, is off limits for the loop, and that creates a corner of the loop there, which is rather pretty. <laughs> well, yeah, no, I was about to say that doesn't do anything, but it does, doesn't it? Because now the loop can't turn there or the loop would touch itself. So the loop's got to go there. This cell is not allowed to be loop. Um, in fact, maybe I use, I'll use small. I'll use small, small X's rather than big X's. Right, so now I'm guessing we've got to do some maths, do we? Where's the easiest place to do maths here? Okay, so what do we know? Well, there are many secrets of German whispers lines. I should probably share them with you. Uh, ah, ah, well, the, the most, you know, the most basic secret of a German whisper line is that you can never put five on it. Because imagine this was a five. Um, in fact, I can make this a five because I know I know it's not going to be. It's not going to clear any fog. It cannot be a five um, because because you can't put a five on a green line. Um, so this could never have been correct. And that's because if we think about putting a five on the line, what would the next digit be? Well, it has to be five away from five. If we go downwards, it's going to get to zero or negative numbers. If we go upwards, we're going to get to ten or higher. And they aren't valid Sudoku digits. So you can't put five on a line. And that I'm wondering whether that's something we need to pay attention to. 
straight away. I mean, you could straight away we can say the five in box one has to be in those four cells. Mm, no, okay, so we've still got, we've already got two cells in box nine that could be fives then. But if we, if we get a box that has, you know, if, if, well, and it could happen here, if this line turns downwards, every time it goes into a cell that has a five pencil mark in it, we can get rid of the five pencil mark. Now, the other thing, of course, about German whispers is that they alternate polarity. Because once we've realized there's no five on the line, the digits can be thought of in one of two ways. A digit on a whispers line is either below five or above five. And what happens is it oscillates. So if this square was below five, this would have to be above five. And you can see that because if you make this as low as you possibly can, so let's make it one, and you increase it by the very minimum you can, which would be five, this would still be, it would still get as high as six, which is the other side of the other side of um, five from one. And then the six would have to go down, down again, because if it went up, it would get to 11 and that's too, it's obviously too high. So we're gonna have oscillation along the line. But one thing I'm also thinking about is there are two digits that on German whispers lines are monogamous and they are they're very well behaved but they're quite difficult to put on the line so I was thinking about the 13 cage as being 4-9 that cannot work here because the 4 and the 6 are monogamous digits they can only partner 9 so if I did put a 4 let's say I put a 4 here that's fine I could put 9 there these two squares would add up to 13 and we might think, well, happy days, we've won. But no, we haven't, because what's this digit? It's got this digit also has to be at least five different from four and it can only be nine. And I'm going to get two nines in the box. So is it also true to say that you can never have a four or a six on this, uh, on Itrio's on Itrio's whisper line. Oh no, no, it's not true. That's, ah, uh, sorry, no, okay. I can see very simply how to, I could do that, couldn't I? I was, mm, okay. If I did that and I made that six and I made those two both ones, I don't think that's impossible. Okay. All right, sorry. I, I thought I thought I might be able to make a sort of big deduction that I could never have six or four on a green line in this puzzle, but that's nonsense. Okay, all right, so that's all the secrets. What therefore is going on with this cage? So this cage, well, it's at least three cells. Yes, because we're oscillating polarity, one of these digits is a low digit, a one, two, three, or four, and the other is a high digit, six, seven, eight, or nine. And the only way we could make the domino add to 13 in a two digit sum would be to use four and nine. And I've already said that's impossible. So, so this cage goes to here. Yes, in fact, this cage goes to here and that's, that's as far as it goes. That is a cage. And I think we can say that for certainty, because imagine that we then went on another cell with this 13 cage. Well, then it would have to have two high digits in it because it would be a four cell cage and we oscillate along the line. So, you know, there's no way to keep two high digits out. And the, low, the two lowest high digits are six and seven, which would require the two low digits to both be zeros. And that's just silly. So this... Yeah, so in fact, we now know. Yeah, we know we know the polar. We know how the polarity of the line moves, don't we? Because if both of those squares were high, i.e. six, sevens, eights and nines, this would have no possible value. So these have got to be low. Now, I know that I know this one can't be four. I'm not so sure about that one. No, that one, that one also can't be four, actually. Because, because 
the next cell on the loop is going to be there or there. And if we put, were to put 4 here and put 9 in either of those squares, it would see the 9 that would be forced onto that square. So this is 1, 2 or 3. This square is, I want to say, 7, 8 or 9, because, again, the monogamous 6 would require double 1 here. So this digit is high, and that can't be 6 either, because if this was 6, you'd have double 1 here. Um, yeah, okay, and now I'm going to go for, I'm, going to, I'm going for a 3 in the corner here, because there has to be a 3 in one of those two squares, because if this was a 1, 2 pair, that would have to be a 10, and that's not going to work. So it's, it's 3, and then two digits that add up to 10 to make this cage work which can't be 3, 7, can they? Yeah, you can't put 7 in the middle here. Because so, 7 is almost monogamous. Seven, 7 likes to behave most of the time, but sometimes it's a jolly naughty digit. So 7 might partner up with 2, but sometimes it likes to partner up with 1 as well. Um, so, But it can never partner up with 3. Uh, so this, this because 7 and 3 are only 4 apart. So this is 8 or 9. If this is 9, this is a 1-3 pair. If this is 8, this is a 2-3 pair. Uh, sorry, I realise I've just stopped talking. The reason I stopped talking is I ran out of things to tell you. Um, that digit's low, and that's... Okay, that's... Is that 1 or 2, or could it be 4... If it's four, no, if it's four, it's got the same property as this one, which is that it would have nine above it and nine in one of those squares as the loop continued and those nines would see each other. So that's one or two. So I've now got a one, two, three triple in box one. And um, how do we do this then? How do I prove that's a three in the corner? I want it to be a three in the corner. If it was a three in the corner, these would both be eights and nines. This would be a one, two pair. Um, I don't see how to do that. I'm sorry. I think that we have to work on this bit down here. So how are we going to do this? Well, this cage is at least three cells, isn't it? Because the only way of making two cells add up to 16 would be nine and seven. And nine and seven are not five apart, so you can't, we can't just fill this cage in as a two cell cage. So that's got to be at least a three cell cage. Um, now, can it be a four cell cage? Well, it could be maybe seven, six, one, two because we have to oscillate polarity. We need two low digits, two high digits. So if I pick the two lowest high digits, six and seven, there is just enough room with a one, two pair. Um, although, although where would you put the six if that was the case? Oh, yeah, you can do it actually. I was about to say you can't do it, but you can do it if that's a six. If that's a six and you make this a one and then and then the the loop bends upwards, those could two could those two cells could both be ones. That's incredibly annoying. So So let's just think about that. I'm sure this won't work, but I'm just going to think about it. So six it would have to go six one and then that would have to be seven. Two, and it has to be exactly that because there's no there's no way to put the six in any of these cells. If you put the six here, it's going to have one on both sides of it, and wherever the ones are, they'll see each other. The same is true here. The same is true here because the lo the loop goes to those two squares. So that is literally the only way this cage is a four cell cage. Now, now if it's a three cell cage, the world is flipped on its head. Because if it's a three cell cage, these two digits surely have to be high, don't they? They can't both be low. 
Oh, maybe they could actually. I've just thought three, four, nine do add up to sixteen. Uh, no, okay, three, four, and nine doesn't work. This is complicated. Actually, there are a few ways this might work. So, three. If you try three, four, nine, I don't want to put it in, but if you can imagine three, four into those squares and nine between them, whichever one of these is four has to have nine on both sides of it because it's monogamous, and that's not going to work. You're either going to get two nines here or uh, a 9 here and then a 9 in one of those. So 3, 4, 9 doesn't work. Now that's the only way I think you could have made those two squares low. So these two squares have to be high. Neither is going to be... Let me think about this, actually. If they're both high... How does that look? You can't, yeah, okay, neither of these can be 6, for the same reason neither of these can be 4. So these have to be from 7, 8, and 9. Right, so they have to be from 7, 8, and 9, and leave enough room for this digit to be part of the cage. So they have to be 7, 8. They'd have to be a 7, 8 pair, and this would be a 1. Right, so this is the whole panoply of options. We, I think we've got to get rid of this digit. I mean, it's true to say that if this is a four-cell cage, that's a six. But this might well not be a four-cell cage, in which case that digit could be anything. But these cells really do have this restriction, i.e. they are. this cell is either two, seven, or eight. This cell is one or seven. This is one, seven, or eight. Now, sorry, I'm just trying to figure out how I know. <laughs> how do we know what this does? Um, why does well? Hmm. 7, 8, 1 here. One of these is a 7. So that's going to have to have 1, 2 on it on its side. So if that was 1, that would be 2. But if that was 7, there would be a 2 in one of those squares. I don't understand. Uh, how... I, ah, no, I'm now thinking I've got to go back over here again. <laughs> My phone is buzzing at me again. Um, Maverick's just flying past as well. Uh, although higher than yesterday when Maverick flew basically just outside my window. Have I missed a rule here? I think I might have missed a rule. One second. Um... Uh, the white dots. We've not got. We've not got. We've not got close to getting a white dot. To get a white dot, I need to clear the fog. One cell wide loop. The loop may not touch itself. The loop must enter every cell of every cage. Yeah. Okay. That. The loop acts as a whisper. That's it. Ah. Ah, oh goodness! I know what it is. I know what it is. I'm ah Bobbin's Bobbin's face. I am sorry. There will be those of you out there who who have realised this more quickly than I have, but it's really clever, actually. To be fair to Itrio, you got me there. That you got me. That is very clever. That's a very clever idea. Hmm. The title of this video might be Simon Gets Got. Yeah, that's very clever. Right, for those of you who have not managed to understand how to make an important deduction here. I'm just trying to work out what the deduction's telling us. 
I'm going to tell you. In fact, this is this is amazing. In fact, the way this is going to work. I'm going to tell you there is a way to show that this is a four cell 16 cage. And give yourselves a moment to have a think about how I could possibly know that with this grid as it is at the moment. And I will tell you, I have to look at the whole grid to appreciate that. I cannot look at these cells in isolation. For those of you who managed to do it, congratulations. The reason is it's to do with the loop and how the loop moves from cell to cell. So that the loop, um, the loop is oscillating its polarity. But we know in box one, this cell, we can think of this a bit like a chessboard. This cell is a low digit. So I basically know that the, the low digits on this loop will occur on the same bishop's color as this, this cell. So the only places we could ever put low digits on the loop um, are in these cells. Because, and that's because if you think about how the loop will move from here, the loop will either go there or it might go there and there, for example, or there and there. But if it ever goes into this cell, you can see that this cell would have to be low because to get to this cell from this cell, we must move effectively we've got to move an even number of, uh, of, of, of we've got to make an even number of moves because we're moving orthogonally each time and that means that we can use the actual polarity of box one to infer the polarity of the loop in box nine so if we think about how we're going to move we, we if we're stepping down like this imagine we made the most efficient series of of moves so we went doop 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 um, so at this point we are on a low digit and we would go to there and that's got to be a low digit it's got to be a low digit in order to ensure that this loop um, this loops polarity is preserved and if this is a low digit it's not a seven or an eight and I think this is going to be a one and we're going to clear <laughs> we're going to clear the fog and then that's a seven and we're going to clear lots of fog that's a two uh, and this but this was exactly the scenario we were looking at where that became a six and now the six is monogamous so it must have a one next to it for wherever the loop goes from here it's got a one next to it well it can't go there in fact that's a white dot as well so it's got to go up the loop's got to go up I think the loop might have to go into that cage now, but I can see something else I'm going to do, which is that there is a white dot. So what's consecutive with six? Well, seven is, but we can't put seven there. So that's got to be five. And yeah, okay. So let's, let me just think about, actually, I'm going to de-blueify these squares. And by the way, I mean, chapeau, Itrio, that is very, very cool. Um, now the next digit, well, my first thought here is that doesn't the loop have to go into this square? Yeah, it must do. Because if the loop turns, at some point it's got to go into that square. So when it does come into that square, the loop's going to touch itself and that's, it, that's not allowed. So once the loop goes here, it's got to go as directly as it can into the cell that we know it's going to go into. And then it's got to stay in this cage which is at least till here, before it exits it for exactly the same reason. If it exited it there and went off on a merry dance, at some point it's got to come and visit this square. And however it gets there, the loop is touching itself, which it, it's not allowed to do. So the loop's got to do this, and therefore we know some polarities, don't we? That's got to be a two, three, or a four. It can't be a four, because it would be surrounded by nine on both sides. So this is two or three. This digit is seven, eight, or nine that digit is seven eight or nine as well because it can't be six because we know it's next to a two or a three on the loop hmm. and the only thing i'm seeing there is that if i make that a three these would be an eight nine pair and three eight and nine would go into those squares in box nine four five six which would give us 
a middly digit on the white dot. And we'd have to be very careful about how this loop got. Well, the loop would then have to bend here, I think. Uh, right, I understand actually. I do understand. This, this is this is another beautiful deduction. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's right. It's right. So this, I think, this isn't a three. Um, now to see why is tricky. Imagine it was a three. Then it would have 8 and 9 flanking it, because 7 and 3 are only 4 apart. Now that means in this box, this would cause this to be a 4, 5, 6 triple. Now think about now, how are we going to get the loop out of box 9? Um, the first thing we could say is the loop would have to come to this square, because it's too close to 4, 5 or 6 for it to go into this directly. So the loop would come here and it would turn. In order to get through, for the loop to traverse a 4 or a 6, because it can never go through a 5, the, the loop's going to have to go straight, because, and, and, and 4 and 6 are monogamous, so we're going to end up with, the, well, not only are we going to end up with the same digits in those two cells, but also this cell is meant to be consecutive with this one, which it certainly couldn't be if these were two cells on the, on the whispers line. So that for a few reasons, this just doesn't work. You just cannot go um, merrily or willy-nilly through uh, vertically through a four or a six on the whisper line. It just will not work. And that means this square, I think, has to be a two, which clears more fog. Sorry, a little interruption there from a, a little person, but it's totally understandable today because it's the little person's um, birthday and she's very excited. Um, and um, <laughs> yes, I had to step away because she had more presents to open. Um, anyway, what were we doing? We were, we'd filled in the two here and I got that. Yes, because I think, yeah, we'd been thinking about why this couldn't be a three because of this this four five six thing i remember that now okay and we've got it right so we've got to keep the loop we've got to keep the loop in the 21 cage and therefore that digit is a low digit by by uh, alternation and it can't repeat the two so that's one three or four and it's not one i want to say because i can't yeah if i put one here these two squares would have to add up to 18 and that's far too many for two digits to add up to so that's three or four four nine two right it's three this is three because if it's four uh we have to the it has to be next to nine we go four nine two that's 15 plus at least seven is 22 and that breaks the total so i think we can put three in there we can uh what have we now got now we've got 16 yeah okay we've got 16 to make from those two squares so they oh well this is beautiful they must be seven and nine because they can't be double eight and what digit can we not put next to a three well you can't put seven next to a three because seven and three are only four apart there is a knowledge bomb for you from cracking the cryptic we keep going nine seven oh i tell you something i really like and that's when if i do get interrupted it's at a point where nothing you know, it, I'm not stuck. I'm not stuck when I come back to it and I can sort of remember what I was doing. That, and this is fine. This is fine at the moment. Right, now the other thought might be, yes, how does this grow? Because it can't go to this square, can it? Because then the loop's going to be touching itself here across this border. So it's either going to go there or there. And then it's going to have to go into this cage because we know it's going to be into that in in that cell at some point. So we've got to go. Oh, in fact, no, it's easier than that. Right. OK, we don't go up. We don't go up there because what three can only be next to eight or nine on the whisper. And there's um, eights and nines down at the bottom of column four. So we must go there. Then we must go here to avoid being naughty. Then we must go here. Now, 
Now the poor old loop never goes into box 7 at all. Um, because if, it, if we try and make the loop go down, in turning and trying to come back up, we'll certainly we'll be touching ourselves far too often for... Um, <laughs> for, for what's good for us so let's let's not do that and we will instead right we'll just continue I think we should just continue doing polarity three can be next to eight and nine so that's got to be eight or nine this has got to be low and can't be four because that's going to cause both of those squares to be nine so that's one two or three the same as this one this square is high again so that's and it's not six. That's got to be seven, eight, or nine. It can't be six because it'll be surrounded by a one here and a one wherever the loop then goes. And then presumably at some some point fairly soon, these ends are going to tie themselves together. And we're going to have most of a shoelace built on the left-hand side of the grid. Now... Do we know how that shoelace is formed or not? I don't know. Or do we have to do some more work? Oh, my phone is buzzing at me again. So that's better than that's better than daughters bursting into the room. Um, Ah, okay, now I'm stuck. How do we do this? This square, how does the loop go? Can, can the loop really go through? No, of course it can't. Oh, sorry. Right, in fact, in fact, one thing you could almost do in this puzzle is that, couldn't you? And that is very helpful. Actually, that is very, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do that because... Um, how could the loop ever traverse a white dot when the rules of white dots say that digits are consecutive? Well, how far apart are consecutive digits? They are one apart. Whereas the loop rules tell us that the consecutive digits on the loop are five apart. So wherever we find a white dot, there's another one there, we can put um, an X in the middle of it. The loop can't go through it. Now the loop can't turn in here because it will, it will hit itself. So the loop must go there. Now the loop can't go here because it would touch touch its, the cell with the 7 in it. Yes, yeah, so the loop continues up here. Right, that's huge. That's huge because what's this digit? This has to be 8. It can't be 7 or 9. It can't be 6 because it, be, it wouldn't be far enough away from 2. So it must be 8. And that's going to clear. Ah, in the most unhelpful way, it clears... It clears... A bit more fog but that square can't be four because it's not far enough away from eight and it can't be two or three by sudoku so that's one more fog and we know what we do with white dots we put an x in the middle of them right i'm not sure what we do here but what i can say is the loop doesn't turn left because that this cell and this cell are connected at a point aren't they and that's illegal so we've got to we're either going up here or we're going right here the next digit is high so if we do go up here now right we don't go up here this is really clever it's still really clever this puzzle I mean it was clever at the start it was sort of wit personified at the start. Um, but it's still really interesting. I, th I think the problem with the loop going to this square is that that square then has to be high and it can't be 7 or 8. Now it can't be 6 because wherever the loop then goes there's going to be two ones in this box which forces this to be 9 on a white dot which forces that to be 8 which clashes. So the loop isn't allowed to go up there and has to go there and then there, and then and then there again, otherwise it's going to touch itself. And now this square has to be high. And it can't be one, because this digit has to be, uh, can't be, we can't have two ones in the box. So that's seven, eight, or nine. 
and it's not 9 because 9 would cause 8 to go here. In fact, it's not 8 because that would cause 7 or 9 to go here on the white dot. So that is 7. 7 can only be next to 2 and 1 on white dots. It can't be next to 1, so that's another... Oh, this is gorgeous now because look what happens for this to this cell. It's next to a cell that must be loop because it's in a cage. So we've got to go off, off merrily dancing through the cage here. This square is high and is, is 8 or 9. So this square is low and it can't be 4 because that's going to cause double 9. So that's 3. No, 3. This is an 8 or a 9. And that square is an 8 or a 9 because it can't be 7. Right, and in fact, look, that's 7 and that can't be 8 because of that white dot. So that's, oopsie, that's 6. This 3 has to, although I've, although I've X'd out this white dot, it still does count for the purposes of, of consecutiveness. And you can't put 3 next to 2 in this dot, so that's got to be 4. This has got to be a 5-6 pair. And then... What could we do with that? This column. Oh, oh, all right. This column has got five, six, and nine to place, which seems to mean that squares an eight. Look, it was because it cleared the fog. That's going to clear a little bit of fog as well. We've got another cage that's emerged. Well, right, we can't repeat three in the cage, so we can take three out. We've got 11 here, so we need 11 more. Right, there's got to be two, nine. It can't be four, seven, five, six, or three, eight. So it's 2, 9, and there's a 9 here. So this is 2, this is 9, more fog is getting cleared. Um, and therefore, oh, I suppose what, one thing as well is we've got to continue on our way. Now we, can, now we can't go in box 3 with the loop because we can't make that move. And if we can't make that move, if we go into box 3, we're going to touch ourselves again. Um... Right, so 9 is in one of two places in the middle box. Right, hang on, what is going on now? Um, let me just see. I'm sure there's stuff we can do here. I just have to spot what it is. Where is... Okay, yes, I'm going to do Sudoku. I mean, it is outrageous I'm being made to do Sudoku in Itrio's Sudoku puzzle. But 9 in this box is placed. I believe, which means I'm looking to place threes, fours, and fives. Ooh. Okay, well, I can place five, actually. That's five. So three and four are left to place. We have a chance of a three in the corner. Uh, one, three, and four up here. Okay, one, three, and four. That's not three by the use of our pencil marks up there. And is that helpful? Is the next question. <laughs> I'm sure something is helpful here. I just haven't got a Scooby Doo what it is at the moment. Um, Three in this box is in one of two places, I think. Which means three in this column is suddenly a little interesting. Because because of these threes, there's sort of an X-wing of threes, isn't there? So we can't put threes in any of those cells. Can't put three there. So three's in one of two places. Not in the corner. Um... Right, what on earth do we look for now then? What do we think is that... <laughs> Where is the natural place for us to gain more knowledge about the world of this puzzle? Um, I'm looking around, desperately trying to work out what's going on. I haven't got a clue actually. Could we argue that? Ah, three, four, seven, two, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 
two, three, four, seven. I don't know. I think I have a feeling it's probably going to be Sudoku. That's normally what it would be when I get completely and utterly flummoxed. So let's have a think about Sudoku. Can we do something clever with that? Oh, I can. This three is looking there. So I can just write three in here. Oh, you rotten thing. You rotten thing. Ah, no, hang on. That's useful. Because now I've got a one for... Ah, I've got a three in the corner. <laughs> That's three in the corner. That's three in the spotlight. Losing its religion. Okay, and now i got a three here. That's useful. That's going to clear some fog. We can immediately... Oh, we, we knew the, fo the, 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 the loop wasn't coming down here already. So I'm not going to bother Xing this. What are those squares, though? They're ones and fives by Sudoku. Can't put one here because that would be a two and that will clash. So that's got to be a five. But this has got to be a one. This square's not a one or a two. Apparently that's now become a three out of nowhere. Ah, hang on. I've got another three in the corner. I have. Oh, well, do we have to sing twice, I think. That's three in the corner. <laughs> that's three in the spotlight. <laughs> Losing its religion. Right, that's now a two. So these are up to five. So this is now an eight. Um, oh, that was wonderful. Now, now, oh, three has to be next to eight and nine. So that's now forced to be nine. That's now forced to be nine. That's cleared away a lot of fog in the final, final part of the grid. There's a white dot emerging under there. That squares, oh, well, that squares a nine because it's next to three. And look, there's a, uh, a cage here. So we've got to sit in the cage and then and then close the loop. And we can do maths. We've got 12 here. We need seven to make 19. Well, and one of the digits must be high. So that's got to be a six one. And, the, and we know the order. That's got to be six, which is rather lovely. That's a four now because it's got to be consecutive with five and it's not six. This column needs twos, sevens and eights. Bother. Uh, oh, actually, I can play seven by Sudoku. The seven can't be in those two squares. So that's seven. These are a two eight pair, I think. Seven is in one of those two cells. Can we do... Yes, okay. How, do, how does this 9 develop itself? Well, it can't go there anymore because this would have to be a 4 and the next digit will be 9 again. So it has to go here, um, which might be important. Yeah, well, it is important in the sense the next digit is 8, isn't it? Because it can't be 9 anymore. So where does this get its... Where does the 3 get its 8 from? It can't be from there. And it can't go here because it'll have to turn and touch itself. So I think it goes that way with an eight. Ah, eight, put eight in there. Yes, and it was right, it cleared some fog. So eight, no, no, it doesn't Doesn't give us the eight there. Uh, the next digit is, oh, I don't know. One, two, three, one, two or three. I don't know. Let's do some more Sudoku <laughs> in the absence of any better ideas. They are two, three and seven. Oh, for goodness sake. Is that really a seven? I think so. I mean, it can't be two or three. So this is seven. Hmm. I don't think that's actually... doesn't seem to have resolved everything. I'm still... I've got another white dot to use here. Now, this has to have an odd digit on it, and it can't be 1, 3, or 9, so it's got a 5 or a 7 on it. If it's 7, it's got to be 7, 6. If it's 5, oh, it could be 4 or 6 that accompanies it. All right, that's not a good place to look. What about this row? 4, 5, and 7. That's, that's a 4 or a 5 by Sudoku. That's a four or a seven by Sudoku, and that's four, five, or seven. Oh, Bobbins McBobbins face, what's going on? Um, I think we're going to have, in a moment, we're going to be forced to do Sudoku in earnest. Now, 
Oh, what about that column actually? Four, five, and eight. Well, that's a four or a five. That's a five or an eight. And that could be anything. Oh dear, no, I don't like this. Okay, I'm not spotting something. Okay, how, what's the next digit on the loop after this? It is. It's got to be high. We know that. And it can't be 6. So it is 7, 8 or 9. So if it's there, it's 7. And if it's there, it's it's nothing. <laughs> oh, that's it's simple. Once you look at this one, this can't go there because it can't be 7, 8 or 9 or 6. So it has to turn down where it's going to have to be a 7. And then it can't go down again or the loop's going to touch itself. So it's got to go there whereupon it must finish. So that is, we've drawn the loop. We know this is a 7. We know this square is, is a 1 or a 2. Somehow, we don't know which one, apparently. Um, okay, but does the... Oh, so now there must be 5 on, um, on here, mustn't there? So this is from four, five, and six. This is from four, five, and six. There's a four, five, six triple in this row. So we need twos, threes, and sevens into these squares. Twos, threes, and sevens. And that's a naked single seven. So that's a seven. That's a four. That's a five. That's a five. And how do we finish this now? Is it done? It might be. That's not seven. The 5 does the 5 and the 6 on this side, so that makes that 4, that 6. This 3 is doing 3 and 2, that's doing 1, 1, 4. That's doing 2 here. So this column, if we look at this, we need 5 and 6, which apparently is not resolved. That's got to be 4, 5 or 6. Oh, there we go. That's got to be 4. Um... So this column needs five and eight. Ah, still not quite done. That means we get six here, six here, five here, one and nine, which we can put in, which gives us eight here. That eight's been available forever. I just didn't spot it. That's eight, that's eight, that's four. All the fog goes away. Uh, this box needs two, six, seven, and nine. So this is a two, seven pair, which we can do. This is a nine, six pair, which we can do. And this box needs a something. Four, I think. Okay, this must be resolved. <laughs> this is six. This is five. This is five. This is eight. Now, now, our job now, I think, is going to be to have a quick look at this loop and see if we can conclude one way or the other, whether it's... Um, let's highlight it. And let's, let's just flick from cell to cell and see whether it looks like we've obeyed the principles that Itrio has set out in the puzzle for that's okay i was worried about the six there um that's okay three eight that's okay another six uh it's just stunning that is just stunning is it right yes it is right 344 people have solved that wow i mean that is a testament to the intelligence of this community it really is this is not an easy puzzle I dispute that this is an easy puzzle. So three, I mean, so 340 people have done it. That must mean that quite a few more have tried it. Um, but if you got stuck on that for a while, I, I would not blame you. I mean, I think this is the start of this, where you have to think about how the bishop's moves are going to propagate through to, to retain the polarity is just brilliant. And it wasn't that easy from there. That this um, proving that wasn't a three was lovely. It's just a stunning puzzle, it trio. Absolutely stunning. Foggy whisper loop indeed. Uh, one of the finest fog of war puzzles I've seen, and I enjoy these very much. Let me know in the comments how you got on. Um, I enjoy the comments, especially when they're kind. And we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic. Now I'm off to get some birthday cake. <laughs>